Hey guys, being week, finals week, but I figured I'd knock out a movie review before I hit the study lounge for about five hours. Interstellar. I really like this movie. Really, really like this movie. If it pushes it on time wise, I like my movies to be about 90 minutes. This one pushes it a lot, but it's a good movie that you should watch. Um, now, in the beginning, it's really prevalent that Earth can no longer support uh, crop fields. You know, be it apples, fruit, or vegetables. Corn's the last one to go, because it's resilient, I guess. <laughs> now, in this story, they discovered a wormhole in about 1930s, but didn't tell anybody. They sent probes through it. This wormhole goes into another place in the, the universe where they have three or four planets that support life. This can be coincidental. Someone had to put this wormhole here. If you don't know what a wormhole is, I'll briefly explain it. Now you gotta think of um, space as a flat piece of paper. Right, flat piece of paper. If you have point A right here, point B, the only way, the fastest way to get to two points is a straight line. I mean, light years, you're talking about a millennia to get to point B where that. The concept of a wormhole is folding the fabric of space. Bam, right there, shortcut. So that's what a wormhole does. It folds relativity. And it is kind of theorized today that relativity is a, co a coin with two sides. Space on one side, or distance, and time on the other. Time is a little more tricky to fold because it really only goes in one direction. However, both are relevant, and the coin is called relevancy. Wormhole. They, they, don't, they don't know who put it there, because wormholes don't fucking just show up out of nowhere. But we'll find out who put it there later in the movie. Finally, it gets kind of rough and there's a scientist, well, not a scientist, a pilot, an, an old NASA pilot who um, is retired and he goes back to some godforsaken flatlands to grow back to the farm to grow porn, corn, not porn, you can't grow porn. His daughter thinks he's, she sees ghosts. These ghosts knock books off the shelf and they manipulate the dust. Dust is everywhere. Dust just goes rolling in a cloud of fuck y'all into the neighborhood. And after a while, they start looking at the books they, this ghost knocks off, and they see Morse code. And the way the dust falls on the floor is actually coordinates. This coordinates leads to, to an underground scientific layer. Once they enter this field of research and study, they assume that uh, they're in trouble. <laughs> trouble. It's, they assume it's military. Come to find out, it's actually NASA. When the Crops start to stop growing. The United States started pouring funding in the storyline and back into NASA just to uh, leave the planet because we destroy the hell out of this planet. Anywho, they asked this ex pilot to join the mission to go through this wormhole. Now they warn this guy um, that time is totally relevant. It's going to move faster or slower. Well, it's slower depending on what part of the universe he does and how close he is to this. Uh, Exploded cut star, this um, black hole called Gargantuan. Cool shit, really cool shit. He accepts. Now there's two plans in this um, in NASA. Plan A is to go to this other side, find a habitable planet, and move the human race there. Plan B is to reestablish a human colony, and they have a bunch of fertilized eggs. And I think the time scientists will form as teachers, and they're going to help human race along on these new planets. If they're habitable, well, they are. Blah 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 blah. So he accepts the mission, and he tells his daughter, "I'm going away, you know, but time is relevant. I'm not going to age like you are. You might be my age when I come back." And it just scares the living hell out of her. Rightfully so. So he goes to the other side. One planet is too close to the, the anomaly Gondwanage, which again is a black hole. So all comets are sucked into this black hole. It doesn't provide chance to happen. So there's. <laughs> It's just a flat, flat world with ocean. No continents are formed because comets or asteroids can't hit the planet Earth or the surface of this planet and fuck things up and promote life. Because out of chaos comes life. Out of diversity becomes evolution, and that's how we are. You know, we're just stairs leading to hopefully something more conscient. A little more community conscient than us, presently. And I think the water is like three feet deep. So just tsunamis, 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 tsunamis. So they can't go there. They go to this frozen planet with, um, not Ben Affleck, but his significant other. 
Fuck. He was in Elysium. Anyway. Fuck that guy's name. Now, his planet is not habitable. So he faked his data so someone can come rescue him because his spaceship is just gone. He faked his data. He was, he was attempting to enter the spaceship and go back to the wormhole to home. However, the robot changed the uh, access codes so they wouldn't fit. I, I love the robots in here. They're square, but they can still move. Now, initially I was... Like, I wanted to be humanoid robots. So when we think about robots, we think about humanoids. But after seeing it's them, and then after seeing them interact with the humans, one has a sarcastic level of sip to 80%, and he just gives everybody shit all the time, and it's good refreshing. Now back to my refreshing point. It's so refreshing to see robots whom I do not want to fuck. We're talking all the bots in um, Austin Powers. We're talking both robots in Prometheus. That, that, those guys were like Hitler's wet dreams. I'm gonna tell you what. Yeah, so it's very refreshing to see a robot that I do not want to hold a relationship with. Good times. Those robots were a character in themselves. So the code's changing on the spaceship now. He tries to enter the spaceship through the airlock. Now this creates a vacuum and makes his body into a missile and just and since the space station is made out of fucking aluminum, this blows it up, right? And just sends it into a 60% rotation and falling towards the uh, the dead planet. So what this badass motherfucking pilot does is he goes in and matches the rotation and then fucking sinks up. This is a gangster pilot. This is a military fucking pilot. This is... That doesn't happen. It's, it's like, this is impossible. No, it's necessary. Best line in the movie. Award. Right there. They only have enough fuel to get to this third planet, but they have to lose some weight. They have three spaceships on this one um, jetpack for spaceships. They use Gargantuan to circle around and slingshot themselves to this third planet. Very smart of them to do. Very smart. Very smart for them to do. But they gotta lose weight. It's the first, but they need rock boosters of the three spaceships. To set momentum. First spaceship goes, and uh, it's the robot guy. He's like, okay, bye. He's like, you can't do that. He's like, yeah, I can. He's a robot, whatever. So after the initial boost, he detaches and gets sent to the Gargantuan. And while he's in there, he collects data of gravity. Now, the big mystery of this movie is gravity. No one knows really what gravity is made of. One theory is you have uh, the type of space, right? And you have something really heavy, like a penny, and pretend this is the sphere. And it, it indents space, right? It indents it but space has to keep flat. Now you notice this little indention right here? In theory, that's gravity. And you have a second object, like this paper clip. And since there's an indention in space, it just kind of rotates and that space like that penny thing you see at Walmart. It just goes around and around, and that's theorized of gravity and gravitons. But no one knows what gravity is, and we, we have a missing piece of gravity, and the only way we can get this data is to go inside a uh, black hole, but no one's been there, no one can escape, not even light can escape a black hole. So the robot goes in there and will collect all the data and hopefully transmit this data. So it goes in there and uh, everything's going good, <laughs> and he says something really, really disturbing, he says, prepare to detach, he's like, what? Second ast astronaut, there are only two surviving astronauts left, you're detaching too? Yeah, I can't fucking, we can't do, we can't do the weight. Bye. Ted catches himself and sends himself into the black hole gantron with his robot buddy. At this point, he stops being a character and starts being a paradox. None of this is possible without this guy. He cannot exist in time without him going back and influences the decisions. This is what, that's what a paradox is. Going back in time and influence your past self to make decisions in the future in just a big, big circle. Inside the black hole lies something very curious. It's just blocks, like little little line blocks of his daughter's room throughout her whole life span. About like six years in, this, in the center of this black hole. It's very odd. He finds out that he can influence time. Well, he can't. He can influence 
He can con transcend time through gravity because it's that strong. He can manipulate things through gravity. Like uh, the bookshelf, it's him actually flicking gravity little punches to the bookshelf and knocking things out. Since he knows Morse code, he says, he sends like stuff like, uh, don't go. And he actually gives himself the coordinates to the science lab they found first in the movie. Total paradox. Total genius. OMG genius. That kind of genius. Now the robot did collect all the data required to solve the mystery of gravity and how to manipulate it. So what he does is right before he went off, he took off to uh, this mission. He gave his, self, gave his daughter a watch. Through gravity, he sent all the data of the black hole through Mirror's code through the second time, the second hand on the watch. And it just transmits all the data. And she writes down the takes. Very old fashioned. Her. I wouldn't do it. I would get some kind of laser to count that fucking shit. But whatever. Her deal. And she solves the mystery of gravity. At this point, I, I got kind of confused of what she used this data for, but then I realized she used it to manipulate gravity so she can have a space station. He wakes up in the hospital. I mean, after he accomplished transmitting the data, the purpose of the gargantuan ceased to exist. Without purpose, it no longer could be there, so it just collapsed on itself, sending him to, back through the wormhole for some fucking reason and just floating around to near Saturn, near the wormhole. And luckily they caught him, I don't know, scouts caught him with like two, 20 seconds of air oxygen left. Very lucky, yep, that guy, him. He wakes up in the space station and he notices a cylinder space station. And the crops just go around and the gravity, they don't fall. Like a kid playing baseball hits the ball and goes up and then hits the relative in gravity up there and it falls towards, towards the opposite side of the space station. Very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Um, thumbs up. It's in Redbox. Go watch Interstellar. A little bit long. Also in Redbox, you should go check out Nightcrawler. I haven't seen it, but Joe Rogan Podcast says it's a thumbs up. And I trust that guy. All right. Thank you for viewing this video. Thank you for your support. Um, comment. Please comment, like, and post to us what you, of what you want to see me decode. Uh, later on this week will be a news feed, a new Dragon Ball Z's series uh, spider-man news Spice some things they're, coming, they're on the way all right i gotta need a sign off guys come on comment with a sign off that you don't want me to see me do bye